How's it going there, YouTube? Tommy here. Time to make another video. It's a hot, hot day. It's been a bit in the high 90s every day for about a week. And uh, don't mind you. Don't mind you. Don't mind telling you. A wee bit toasty for me. Speak to you in a minute. So, yep, uh, time for an update. Trucks are running all right. Uh, we dragged one home recently that uh, had, uh, it wouldn't run, uh, making noises when it did run, bad noises, thought it was engines, thought it was something major. So we had, Justin took a truck out with the wrecker dolly in the back of one of our trucks, but took one out to the driver. That's going to be where philosophy from now on is when we've got a truck that's got a problem, just going to go get it, bring it home, take one out to the driver, that way you don't need to uh, relocate trailers and all that good stuff. So, And there's very few places that you can't get to in a couple of days from here and they save you an absolute fortune. So, uh, But when we brought it back, it's in at Freightliner, it's been diagnosed as having a, it needs a high pressure fuel pump. I was quoted about 12, 13 grand for one of them over the road in Indianapolis, I think it was, a few months ago. And we just end up bringing it home. And uh, this one here, the quote to do the whole job is $4,100. So can't complain at that. Let me spin this round and let you see what we've been doing. So I'm that into flatbedding. This reefer came home at the weekend there, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. But we've picked up three more of these. Flatbed trailers. Can it be bad? The only difference for these is that they've got, you pay extra for it, but you get uh, disc brakes on them instead of drums. I would rather have uh, had the drum brakes, to tell you the truth, because I know how to do them quite easily. But um, yeah, these are nice, eh? I kind of like them. Got a couple of them. All of the brand new rubber, brand new brakes, you know, nice shiny wheels, double toolboxes. I'm going to say it in America because I'm here, but aluminum frames on them, you know, aluminum frames, so can't be bad, eh? So that's the, the latest thing that we've got. So the reason for the flatbeds is a couple, twofold reasons. Uh, one of them is that the rates are a bit better. The next reason is there's not as much bull crap that comes with flatbeds as there is with reefers. We had a trailer, a reefer unit that was a drop trailer job in Nebraska. I don't want to mention the company's name, but they're a big, I think they're the biggest meat shipper in the country, maybe in the world. They ship meat to six continents. Uh, throughout the planet. I don't know how many countries, but you know, they're big. So we dropped the trailer off on Wednesday night and supposed to pick it up Thursday. Driver went to pick it up and the, the foot of one of the legs was just lying there with a, with a little pivot bolt that goes through. It was snapped off. So you've seen these yard hustlers or yard hustlers or hustlers, whatever you want to call them. Shifting, shifting trailers around about, they go fast at it, they drop them quick, they move, they unhook one line, away they go, up it fast, down, go. Anyway, they broke off the foot of the, one of the legs. They agreed to pay for it, uh, and then they said, you guys find somebody, because you know they're a big company, so we found somebody. And then I told them that they'd have to be paying for it, because, anyway, ended up that they haven't paid for it yet. <laughs> And flat broke Tam here has uh, had to figure that out. Eventually, the truck out there on Saturday morning. The guy made it down to Florida today and is unloading right now. So that was a bit of a stressful, demoralising thing. With another truck that held up on on 
two loads with the same broker. The first load was late unloading, uh, which made us late for the pickup. And uh, they said, well, you can't load you tonight, we'll load you tomorrow morning, you're working now. So I can't be bothered dealing with all that type of crap anymore. The flatbed stuff, adjusting, you know, see when you're hauling hay, you go to the farm, the field, you know, I'll just spin this room, but it's just all, you pull up, they throw it on, sometimes you tap it, sometimes you don't. If it's steel, same thing, you're loaded quite quickly. And wherever you're going, the people want it off the truck fast. Uh, we booked Justin in a load this morning. Took him absolutely no time to get loaded. It's uh, rig matting going to the oil field. You know, I've hauled that in the oil field before, and it, those big cranes down there, it's two stacks of railroad ties, railway sleepers. You just lift one bundle and set it down in the deck, and lift another bundle, set it behind it, throw in some straps and go, you know. The, the whole reefer thing, I've about had my fill of it, so we've got half a dozen of these flatbeds and five or six, I can't remember. But the reefers, I'm gonna keep maybe two or three, but I just don't wanna be doing it anymore. I've got a couple older drivers that, that are, uh, don't really wanna be throwing straps and dealing with tarps, so that's, uh, that'll be for them to drive them. If it wasn't for them being here, then I would just get rid of all of the reefers. Just, it's just uh, not the aspect of trucking that I want to be in. I don't want to be standing there or having drivers sitting for days and hours and, you know, waiting for somebody to decide that they want to put the, the stuff into their storage unit and have, instead of that, we are storing it, we are chilling it, we are, you know, freezing it or whatever. Plus, here's the deal. A brand new trailer for a reefer um, on a lease purchase thing to start with is a little balloon payment at the end, but it's it's the payment for the trailer is less money than it actually costs for a month's worth of fuel in a reefer. You get it? So if you get a better rate on a flatbed and you get unloaded quicker and you get a reload quicker and the people seem to be so far nicer to deal with uh, then you come on to the financial side of it as far as the cost of a trailer so if you can get a trailer for the price of the reefer fuel um, you're really saving the price of your reefer payment you know so that's the plan for for me that's what i think we want to be doing it's grub time here, lunch time, but it's it's about 85, 89 degrees, something like that. It's freaking hot. Um, what have we done so far? All the trucks are running. This one that's in, getting the fuel pump will be back out. The pump arrived today. Uh, everybody's running, everybody's working. We don't have these fringe drivers, as I spoke about before, who, you know, I'll need babysat all the time. Everybody will go it. Um, has got initiative and skill and ability and we we'll like it. Yesterday, on Sunday, I got a phone call from my oldest son. Take my wife out of the picture because I speak to her quite a bit. Um, but I got a phone call from my oldest son about something. Uh, somebody with a question and redoing an edit in the logs. Uh, one for a, from a driver. What was it? It wasn't much. Four phone calls yesterday is all I got. In the whole world, there's been days at the weekend when we're running 15 trucks that I get phone call after phone call of in insanity and stupidity, you know? So it seems to be working out all right. Are we rich? No, we're freaking near it. Are we breaking even? Maybe, don't know. But there's obviously a lot of startup costs for me on my own doing it, you know? But we'll see how it goes with these flatbeds. It seems to be better, you know? nicer, easier, less negativity, you know. I, I read a thing about some people who are uh, billionaires and their philosophy is don't work with boring people. So uh, I'm probably boring as uh, I want to be dealing with, but, you know, uh, the flatbed stuff is nicer. The brokerage stuff is dealing with it is 
you know, those guys that are dealing with the reefer freight, they've got to be stressed out the box because they, they kind of get stuff loaded or unloaded and it takes forever and you're dealing with a lot of crap. So their attitude's not that great. But if you're dealing with the flatbed guys, uh, it seems to be different. I, we just like it better, you know. What did I do this weekend? Oh, I went down to Utah and watched my, old, my oldest boy playing in the band down there, Route 89. I'll throw a video or two up here. Um, they played at the fireworks display down there for Pioneer Day in Utah area. That was a good night. I got back from Scotland this week, popped over there, spent some time with my wife. Hopefully, hopefully, our Tommy's got the video up of the truck show in Scotland. If you haven't seen that yet, have a look at that. We went there to all the vintage truck rally, road run things. So that was a good time. We had some good food over there. As ever in Scotland, the food is fabulous. Uh, trucks are running. We're running. The weather's good. Can't complain about uh, what we're doing, but just not get any money. As ever, it's different. But the cafe's doing all right. It's making a, it's making its way. Uh, wife's doing great there. Uh, good job I'm not there all the time or I'd be as fat as a freaking anyway the food's good hey I like it it's uh, it's all right we're working on some local stuff here uh, there's, there's a place behind us here that hauls that manufactures pallets they've got a place here one in uh, Montana and one in Utah and they haul all over with some stuff in flats some in dry vans and some with trains no train like like a two trailers uh, and the guy who's our landlord is the guy that owns it so uh, it could work out really well for us yeah. and you, you know up, up through the yard there you can see I don't know if you can but there's there's a uh, there's a bit where they've got well they, they make they don't make all the pallets here they make the, the materials for the other places to make them because I think it's you can haul more if the pallet's not built. So um, this guy, the guy was in, trying to get us to do some work for them. So hopefully we can do that, and uh, they can re they can load the trailers for us up there as well. They've got a little yard thing to, you know, just pop down here, grab a truck, you know, grab a trailer and go load it for us. You know, once just bring it down the yard. It's only 500 yards up the road here. There's a train there actually. Our neighbour across the street there, they're cutting turf over there. But no, that's what join the flatbed and join the not having as many trucks very much. So, I made a video recently about doing the hot shotting. Uh, when I was in Scotland, the truck gets sold that we're looking to get, so I've backed off of it. And then last night, the guy phoned me up and said, Hey, by the way, that sale fell through, the truck's here if you want it. He just texted me this morning again, so maybe maybe do that. I don't know. I don't know. I need to check out the trailer part of it first. I've got to go down to Utah this week to do a VIN inspection in a truck. And uh, yeah, it's all right. Can't complain. But our dial's in the, in the office there. Oh, let me show you our new conference table. It sounds really posh, that. But we got it used with a truck coming down past Missoula that was empty and uh, there was space on the deck for it so I found it on Facebook Marketplace and paid $400 for it for a big huge conference table and six big leather swivel reclining chairs uh, used obviously but uh, the main reason for getting it is that we needed somewhere to eat our fried chicken off of so I, I, don't, I don't think I'm really this conference table kind of guy you know I'm more of the chicken table kind of guy so well, let me show you yeah so them's were my trailers yeah another one to pick up so hold on get this turned around about here so I don't like to do this fast because it makes people dizzy show you my chicken table uh-huh hard at it at the chicken table such a bad name. Huh? Such a bad name for it. It's me. a good name. You're on YouTube, by the way. Hi, YouTube. Yes, this is what kids do to you. This is Daniel, by the way. He's our superstar dispatcher. That's right. 
and safety and HR, HR and insurance and 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 PLS. everything. And this too. Yeah, let me show you. This is where his desk is, you see? Two desks were in here when we moved in and he claimed both of them. One over there for stuff and one there to work on. The old dad gets the chicken table. See, check these out, see these nice chairs, look at that. They swivel and recline and everything. So cause I'm here, he pirates the desk and has then taken over the desk. Have you got to see for yourself, boy? A lot of papers on that, that desk, a lot of repair stuff, and not my papers, but I suppose I could move the papers, but... You could do the work, attach to the papers and file them. <laughs> I could do. We have a filing cabinet here. That's true, that's true. You've got a system though, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> All right, I'll pop through to the workshop now. <sighs> Here we have our set up in here. People, a lot of people ask, oh, what about the yellow truck? What about the yellow truck? Well, as soon as I got a couple of dollars, we'll be working on it. I was in Scotland and people were asking me about the yellow truck. Here she sits. The engine is over. It's a cat engine It's going into it. It's over at Jeff's. If I had the money to paint it, I would do it while it's sitting here like that, but it ain't that bad. You know, we did take the inside out of it. There's some stored stuff in there, but we'll pull all that out and put some new carpet and seats in it. Spot there for to put some some straight pipes on it. It's setting me a good rubber on it, and all the brakes are done, so it's ready to rock and roll as soon as we put the engine in it. So, what have we got here? Yeah. Here's a tyre store over here, a bunch of tyres. Already built up on the tyres, on the you know, so the idea is, is that when the truck comes in, these tyres, you know, we'll get on it. Ugh, spare fridge there for a truck. And this is just what kind of parts store thing. We've got a bunch of bunch of tarps here and some bungees and straps and binders and stuff. That's the, that there's the old engine out of the yellow truck, part of the bottom half of it and we've got a transmission, 13 speed and an 18 speed and the radiator out of that yellow truck. So anyway, there we have it. Hopefully. Once we get the overhead from setting up the trucking company again, we'll get that lady all put back in the road. All right, time for checking.